Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and welcome to the second part of this What's Update video for Grounded's Hot and Hazy Update. Last time we hit up most of the stuff, but this time we're going to be focusing on the Black Ant Hill and the Black Ant Hill Lab, as well as the Sandbox. Now, this area, this Black Ant Hill, has been described as the first proper dungeon in the game, so I'm guessing there's a decent amount of stuff to find here. There is definitely a burgled ship here. Uh, is this it? Yeah, so over in that direction is a burgled ship that you actually need in order to upgrade weapons past level 5. I've heard that in the most recent update, the one that's in public test right now, They've actually made some nerfs to how strong weapons get when you upgrade them, and people are complaining about that. Also, apparently that update, not so far away, so it's kind of funny that I'm doing this video, and the previous video, now, when people are making it sound like the next update is going to be out in a couple days. You know, it's going to switch from public test into full release, because I guess they usually do those public tests for about two weeks before launch. So it could be that we'll have some follow-up videos not long after this. And I do still want to do the Broodmother as its own thing, so I might do that before touching on the new update after this. So we're going to explore the Black Ant Hill Lab as thoroughly as we can. And we're going to use the helmet light for that, which is why I brought it in the first place. Okay. There is a Black Ant soldier. Unfortunately for him, he spawned on top of these mold stalks, so he's stuck. So we're going to kill him, we just don't want the other ants to see us do it. These guys do hit decently hard. Definitely harder than the red ants. And I believe they are resistant to slashing damage, which is why I switched to the club here. But, we are also going to get to see another new creature when we head up to the sandbox, which is of course the ant lion which I am looking forward to getting a closer look at. I have technically killed one of them, because when I went up to the sandbox through the entrance in here to set up my little base camp at the entrance so that we wouldn't have to do that in the video, there was one antlion that was kind of stuck in the wall of the actual tunnel, so I beat that one to death and didn't really get to see what it does. Oh, someone's hostile to me. I think there is a worker ant over here that saw me, <laughs> but it's stuck in the wall. So yeah, like I said, there's definitely spawning problems this game still has, with things spawning in the walls. Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't miss any tunnels back here, which is why we're going back towards the entrance. And I believe you can't build in here. There's a lot of places, basically any of the landmarks in the game you can't build on or in. So that's why I didn't just put my base camp in one of the rooms in here. Okay, there's rotten food, so this is the entrance here. Let's put my club away. Oh, I have too much stuff. Alright, uh, well, let's just get rid of the bee stuff, because I actually have a lot of this saved up, just from shooting random bees that fly by. And I'll drop this spider web. There we go. Also, actually, we should probably eat some tadpole jerky. It's a good thing I made so much of this. Can't waste food. Can't waste food. Because we're Can't almost food. out of food. Top up our water. Is the key to performance. It is still, after all, a survival game, though I do find that the the food and water management in this game is not particularly annoying. It's not so constant that you're like, oh, I gotta keep eating or I'm gonna die. Though, <laughs> when it's low enough, it will literally say, eat or die, and give you like a 90 second countdown timer. I hear a rumbling sound or something over here. Also, apparently the ant lab has a mini-boss in it. I think it's just a, a version of the floating robots you fight in some of the labs. Because the name is Assistant Manager. So we might fight that if we can find it. I don't know if we're going to completely see everything in this lab. The point is more just to kind of explore around and see what we can find. Also, weirdly, neither the Black Ant Hill nor the Red Ant Hill have ant queens in them yet. I don't know if they're eventually going to add those, or if... We're just supposed to kind of assume there's one that we can't see somewhere producing all the eggs. Because the eggs just kind of appear. You know, when there's a shortage of ants, eggs will start spawning to replace them. So if you kill a bunch of ants, you'll find a bunch of eggs. This is the stuff. It's the ant mandibles. 
Um, I actually might want to grab these just so we can repair our sword. Because this is what you need for the sword. Okay. So I guess we'll go down here, because this is the one that leads away from the lab. Never mind, this leads to a different part of the lab. There's another soldier in that wall. So this is area B, locked. So generally the way these lab areas work is you have to kind of unlock different segments of them and pull a lot of switches. And most of the challenge is just finding out how to navigate them. That might be the boss right there? No, never mind, there's a bunch of them. I think those are just Taze Tees. So yeah, I didn't look around too much in here. I kind of just went straight for the sandbox entrance, which is just past the lab. It's actually very easy to just run through here without having to fight anything. It's a very sparsely populated anthill. Whereas the red anthill, they're just everywhere. Oh, there's a grub. Actually... From the rumbling, I think that's a larva. They actually made a nice sound cue so you can tell if you're going to dig up a grub or a larva. What is this? This is just a bunch of dirt overlapping in a weird spot. Okay, I think we're heading towards the burgle chip. Also, the next up... Oh, that's a bombable rock. Yeah, might as well blow that up. I made a bunch of bombs just in case we ran into any of these. I was going to say, the next update will actually be adding termites and a termite nest. And while it still doesn't have queens, it does have termite kings. Which, uh, I don't actually know if that's a particular cast of termites. I kind of would assume that they are, like, royal guards rather than actual, you know, kings. And there's just a milk molar in here. And they can't cut those. So let's grab some more milk molar so we can get swole. Or get yoked, as it says when you upgrade. So, if this is a dungeon, it's a pretty basic dungeon. You know, there's not really much going on here. Okay, this looks like a lot more lab than the other area. I don't think I've been in here at all. Really glad I brought this helmet, though. I just happened to find a bunch of fireflies when, right before I was doing the video. Okay, I gotta remember to block. It would be embarrassing to die to a black soldier ant, even though we have a respawn right outside. I don't need the head. Uh, let's see. If I were to repair my dagger, I think it just uses mandibles. Oh, we need quartzite shards. So yeah, we can drop the head and the other parts. And there's plenty of quartzite just kind of lying around in these tunnels. The ant nests are one of the best sources of quartzite. And I think it respawns, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay, that's still locked. That one looks like it's open. Kind of wish I had made some crow arrows. So, the AI in this game, typically if you're shooting at them from somewhere they can't reach you, they're programmed to just run as far away from you as they can, so that you can't just cheese them like this, but I think he was slightly stuck. Oh. Oh, shit. Right, they saw me. They saw me commit crimes against ants. One thing that is kind of tough in this game is just stamina management. Because you can see that this club, you get three swings before you are out of stamina. It also sounds like one of the other things they've changed in the upcoming update is the way that combos work. Basically, they've made it so that the first hit of a combo does only half damage, which is kind of stupid. And apparently the reason for that was because the first hit with this thing, you could spam somehow 
And so they decided that they would nerf all weapons because of this one hammer instead of just balancing the hammer. Okay, I'm gonna grab some quartzite shards for repairing. Didn't I didn't want that ants pieces. I will keep the parts though, because I need those for repairing the shield, I think. Yeah. In fact, we'll repair it now. Just to save space. I'm hoping that this Firefly helmet isn't breaking because I'm wearing it. Like, it's just from damage that it's breaking. I'm also not sure why the soldier ants make such a weird creaking noise. It just sounds like they're, like, rubber stretching. Okay, so here's our lab. I think that's just a black ant shield right there. Okay. Uh, I don't know what room this is. I guess it's the one we were just in with the other locked door. Oh no, wait. Yeah, this is where this is literally the room we were just in. I just didn't see the other door, so I was like, oh, this can't be the right one. We have a chest here. It's got omelant. Muscle sprouts. I don't need that because I have like 40 of them. And spicy arrows. I don't know if we're going to need these. I'm not sure what the antlions are weak against. Okay, so there's nothing useful up here then, is what you're saying. Uh, this is one of the meals that provides multiple buffs. So well fed means we will not get hungry for a while. Meal, and then thorns, which I assume does damage when we take damage. We're gonna eat that, top of our food. But yeah, there's no switch or anything in here. Alright, respawn. Okay, they're not actually very observant. Observe ant. So is this a dead end then, for now? Seems like we could open a shortcut here, but this mostly just seems like a room full of quartzite. Ah, crap. Which way do we come from? Um, I think this is the way we didn't come from. I'm not seeing the hole where we bombed the rock. We'll just keep going this way. See where we end up. You can place trail markers. Wait, this is the other locked one. You can place trail markers, but I'm not sure they'd be super useful underground because we can't really mark the actual path itself without using a lot of them. Like, they're good for marking landmarks on the map that don't get marked automatically, but... They're not great. Okay, this is the hole right here. So, this is a dead end, then. Because there's where we bomb the rock. Right? Yes. That's where the milk molar was. So... I guess we'll go back to the main room, because I think there is one of the lab doors that was open there. And maybe with that we can open up the B area. But I don't know, I kind of feel like there was supposed to be more challenges in here. Aside from just some angry ants stuck in the wall. I also don't know why specifically it seems like it's mostly the soldier ants that get stuck. I think it's just because they're bigger. Okay, so that's that whole area over there. I don't know how to get to the anthill chip, but I'm going to guess that it's actually locked off behind that B area. Because usually those chips are kind of the reward for completing a lab or an area. Okay, this is also B. There's A, and that's also locked. Oh, you're not stuck in the wall like I thought you were. 
This is actually the room where I farmed my parts for my ant dagger and shield. There's usually two of these guys in here. Okay, so that's locked as well. We need to find a room that is accessible that we can, like, turn this stuff off on. Can I get in there? Now there's a bombable rock. Nothing in here. Well, it's a good thing I brought so many friggin' bombs. I didn't expect to need so many. But I was like, you know what? I'll just make as many as I have ant eggs, because the fungus is easy to get, but the ant eggs are much more limited. Okay. Please be something useful in here. Yeah, that looks like the switch for the A doors. Science. Clearance level A. Now we need to get to sector B. Nope. Nope. Didn't realize there was a fucking hole in the floor there. There's also another one over there. It seems to just have raw science. So this shouldn't take too long to get through then. Well, I say that, and then we find a big pit. That tastes really good. And now I'm out of water, so we might have to leave the ant hill at some point to go get water. Okay, so I got that. I believe this over here is the path to the desert. Man, there's a bunch of paths here that I apparently didn't look down. Whoa. More quartzite. Um, okay, that's the path to... You can see I put a marker on it because I have a lean-to up there. It's the path to the desert. So this should be the path to another lab if there's the wires running along the ceiling. There's a hole to the surface. Not a real hole, because there's no surface equivalent to that hole. There's a scab there. Can I cut these roots? These don't look like the roots you can cut. Oh well. I don't really care that much about the scab, because it's basically just a color scheme for your UI. Also, yes, this is not the tool to use if you can cut it. <laughs> oh. The ambience changed. That means we're in another biome? Oh, we're under the desert now. There's more than one exit. So, this is something I wasn't sure about, is if the desert kills you from heat at night, and it seems like it doesn't. Did I not... Oh my god, there is a wolf spider. What are you doing up here? I was gonna say, did I not actually build any of this stuff? Oh boy. Alright. If I'm going to fight a wolf spider, I need the the sword, which is in my inventory. I need like five seconds to not... Well, that wasn't too bad. That was only half my health. But the poison, you can see, is killing me very quickly. Yeah, see? So, they're not impossibly strong by themselves, but... They do poison damage. Hmm. Yeah, I wasn't expecting there to be wolf spiders in the desert. <laughs> but it's not too hard to get back up there. 
it seems like those two exits are like right across from each other because I built that stuff or placed that stuff. I guess I didn't actually build it. Right next to the other exit. Under a little umbrella so that you wouldn't die of heat during the day because the sun cooks you in the desert as it heats up the sand. I might take a short break before we go into the desert to grab that stuff, because I actually thought I had already built it. But apparently I was like, nope, that's a problem for future me. Or I was intending to bring that stuff down with me when we first got here. Another bombable spot. Well, all my bombs are in my backpack. Now, what time is it? It's 4.08. So it should be getting dark soon. Maybe that was the only way out. I was pretty sure there was a more direct route. Cookie sandwich bits. I'll eat that. I've had worse, I guess. Slightly moldy and gross, but... When you're hungry, you're hungry. I guess this is the way I took. It seems to be the only way up. You can still hear bad things. I think that was actually an ant lion, though. Okay, yeah, so this is the exit, because this is the wall right here where the ant lion was stuck. Is that wolf spider still around? No. So it seems the desert is kind of safe at night, as it should be. It wouldn't make much sense if it started cooking you. There's an antlion over there. Yeah, I don't have any of this stuff. It's all sprigs and clover leaves and shit. Oh, I did bring the planks up here. I guess, I guess that's what I thought was completing it. There's some sap right here. Actually use that. But there's no plants up here as far as I know. Oh boy. Well, there's an early look at the antlion. It's big and scary, but kind of slow. I need to get back down into the entrance. So from them, we can actually make one of the best two-handed swords in the game right now, or I guess just one of the best weapons in general. That will change in the next update where they're adding more high-tier weapons, but for the moment, it is one of the top weapons. And I think the best one that does slicing damage. So I recovered my gear, which means we have our bombs back. My armor is uh, pretty roughed up, though, because unfortunately they decided that anytime you die in this game, you keep your your equipped gear, your armor, and whatever you had in your hands, but it takes a big hit to durability, which makes some of the durability stuff in this game feel very tedious. I actually wonder if these bombs would be any good in a fight against, like, the brood mother. Oh, okay. Is this the scab? That is the scab. That was just there to show you there was one behind the rock before you blew it up. not time that very well. And now my hat broke. Oh, my light hat broke. God damn it. 
All right, well. What does that take to repair? Iridescent scale, bioluminescent goop, berry leather. That is fucking expensive to repair. I don't even think it took berry leather to build. But yeah, that's all mostly firefly parts. Well, this little exploration is not going the best, but I kind of expected we'd run into some trouble. Man, it's so dark. I keep trying to open my inventory to use stuff, because I'm like, oh, I should probably use one of my smoothies or something, but, of course, I have to get it first. <laughs> he managed to get himself stuck in the wall when he wasn't. But yeah, spamming block kind of works in this game sometimes. Anyway. Let's check out this A area, and then I think we're going to... Oh yeah, this is just the drop. Right, not this A area, the other one. Over there? Can we get to that? I think we could get to that if we had a uh, floater. I say, let's check out this A area, and then we'll take a little interim break where I'll go back to base, repair all my stuff drop off the extra inventory, and then return with another repaired helmet before we go any further. Where does this lead? There's an ant egg. I haven't seen any black ant eggs, but there's nothing you can craft with them anyway. Another amelant. Ooh, some more bombs. Those are actually valuable to find. I don't need the rest of the sap. I only needed one, it turned out. So as you might expect, you make the omelette out of ant eggs. Okay, we got another storage room here. Ooh. Nice that they have these. So they give you these beds because you can't actually build beds inside the labs. Feeling refreshed. Even the ones that aren't in the anthill. Okay, cookie sandwich bits. Mint shards, I'll take those. Oh, they don't stack past 11, that's why I'm only carrying 11. Acorn bits, uh, granola bars. These are actually really good because while they are just food items, they heal a big chunk of your health. Dry grass junk. I do need these. It's one of the things we need for the stuff up above. Grab those. Nope. Okay. This is the room that was full of robots. I don't know what kind of damage they're weak against. <laughs> But they're not very strong, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> did, did one of them die on its own? Because there was two of them there, and I only fought one up there. Okay, some more raw science. Usually there's, like, audio logs and stuff scattered around, but I'm not really seeing anything like that. So there's level B. Hmm. All right, I think we're going to do our interim here before we go check out what's in B, because that's probably where the boss is. So I'm going to go back to base and, you know, refill up and repair everything. And then we'll return here, finish up the lab, and head into the desert. So I guess this is going to be a long video after all, but I should have expected that. So I will see you on the return.
And we're back. I have dumped off a bunch of stuff from my inventory that we already use, like the diving stuff. I switched armors over to the full roly-poly set because we killed those ones on the way here and I had enough to make the helmet. And as you can see, it has very much a Roman centurion look. I also stocked up on a few things, repaired some things, so we should be pretty set to head into the desert. And I built all the stuff that was up there. I even built some more uh, grenades, just in case. So we should be ready to finish up the lab and head into the desert to fight some antlions. So we unlocked the B segments, which means we need to go back to the main room, right? No, we need to go to the large room, the one that had the two A doors and then another B door. Oh, and I switched out the bow for the crossbow and brought some of the fancier feather arrows. So this thing does pretty good damage with those. And I figure we don't really need the bow because I'm usually just doing like one shot and then switching to melee. So with this, we can pop off a shot and then switch over to our sword and shield. It's a good way for aggroing enemies away from other enemies. It's the right way, right? Yeah, this room. There's a B door over there. There's also a couple soldier ants. We'll have to kill this one too, so I'm gonna take a shot at him. Unfortunately, there's no way to aim the crossbow. Like, you can't zoom in with it like you can when you're charging up a bow shot. Also, the weird thing with arrows in this game is they kind of like stick into an enemy for a couple seconds and then they fall out, so you don't even have to kill them to get your arrows back. But I don't know if these arrows will eventually break. Oh, we pissed off this worker ant. I don't know if the arrows will eventually break, or if it's just a case of you end up losing them. Because they're not super cheap to make, crow feathers are not easy to get, and you only get two arrows per feather. And then you can make those arrows into specialized arrows, like the spicy or uh, cool. Or no, fresh. Fresh is the cool one. Okay. What have we got in here? Looks like we got a bombable wall and another milk molar. Oh, I also figured out why they nerf this thing. Is because you can do the attack and then block and then attack again. So you can just keep going like this to really quickly spam damage with the hammer. And it stuns things very quickly because it has a very high stun rating. I would assume that the tools are, you know, mostly just tools and not super effective in a fight. But there are certain enemies that are only weak against smashing, which only the hammers do. And it sounds like the tier 3 hammer in the next update is actually pretty powerful, so I guess they do have their own utilities. Okay, we're gonna need a bomb. I'm really glad I made so many bombs. I didn't even expect we'd need this many. Because I thought they were mostly only for getting milk molars and stuff in little side areas, and not for actual progression. But this looks like it's actual progression. Okay, now where are we? I think we're just above where we just came in. Some more quartzite. Some more brat bursts. Still no sign of that manager, but we haven't gotten to the area that you can see from the main entrance. This might be it here. I kind of wonder what the purpose of these guys used to be, because, like, Burgle was a burger-flipping robot. And the fact that these are called Taze Tees makes me think that they were, I don't know, some kind of, like, serving robot as well. Okay, got some bandages. Uh, speaking of which, I should top up my food and water. I think I brought food? Yeah, I got a bunch of mushrooms. They're not very good for your food, but a stack of them will fill you up. One thing I forgot to bring. Oh, I also brought 
some ingredients that we'll need to make the antlion armor because you need the antlion armor in order to survive in the daylight in the desert. So I thought we'd bring the gear that we need that isn't antlion parts and that way we'd be able to make it right away. Got a workbench here, got an analyzer. I don't think I have anything new. I'm not really sure exactly when this game is meant to be set, because parts of it feel like this is supposed to be the 80s with the style of action figures and the, you know, fake D&D, &D, which I kept calling Mazes and Minotaurs. It turns out, if I had actually read it, it says Mazes and Myrmidons. Or Minotaurs and Myrmidons. But, you know, I guess that makes sense. They're both Greek. Okay, I think this might lead up to where that robot is that we saw. Yeah, this is the area above the main room, and then this is where it's broken off. Except, we've already been in here, haven't we? Hmm. I guess that's just a shortcut, then, that we open. So where's the actual B door we need to go through? Go down here. I mean, I don't remember the workbench, but maybe that was there the whole time. Yeah, this part here seems to be the shortcut. Maybe there's another B door over here. But yeah, where I was going with all that. Okay, yeah, this is the side hall that we saw from the main entrance. Is that the interior of this is very retro future 80s as well. Ominent Practical Technologies. That is the company that is behind all of these miniaturization sciences. Though it kind of sounds like it's just one guy. Okay, we got another Amelant. I wonder how long it takes these to go bad, because these must have spawned when I first came here, right? Get some more smoothies. So this one has a question mark, which means it doesn't do anything special, it only heals you. That's what happens if you use a non-recipe. Did I not go through this door? No, this looks new. I don't understand what's with these little, like, side server rooms. Like, how are you supposed to fix those if there's no way to get in there? Okay, there's another rock here. Sounds like there's just raw science behind it. probably put on the helmet. It's kind of why I brought it, isn't it? Unfortunately, though, it doesn't have very good durability, so dying while wearing it will take a big chunk out of it. And I died quite a few times during that break. Okay, where does this put us? Um, well, we're getting closer to the burgle chip, so this must be the right way. What the hell are these? Weird, like, puffball fungus. No, never mind. There's just another mega milk molar up here. Okay, is there anything else, or is this a dead end, pretty much? Looks like this is a dead end. Oh man, two bombs just to get that? I kind of hope that they give you more options for making those, like actually having eggs spawn in here <laughs> that you can use. Because I think there are black ant eggs, but you can't use them in the recipe. It's only red ant eggs. Okay, the music changed there for a second, which made it sound like we were heading towards an exit. And we got two soldiers. I'm going to try luring one off. I don't have to fight both of them at once.
And then we'll just uh, chip away at this guy from back here if I can get a shot on him. I hear a third one, but it might be stuck in the wall. Nope, oh, there it is. Hmm. One thing that's a little unfortunate is you can't cancel the reload on the crossbow in order to switch weapons. You have to wait until the animation finishes. And enemies can jump really far. He just threw an arrow at me. They throw me off because their three-hit combo starts with the same attack as when they just do one attack. And I'm going to use a bandage just to keep my health up because we have so many. I also put the granola bars onto the hotbar because they heal about half your health bar instantly. So when you're taking a lot of damage, it's good to pop one of those. I think this is the last one. And he got stuck. I feel no shame for this. It's a bug-eat-bug bug world here, or in our case, kid-eat-bug world. Unfortunately, it seems like ants don't have anything edible on them. But yeah, see, I didn't lose any arrows there, so the only downside of using the crossbow was that I'm doing damage to the crossbow. But I don't think it's very expensive to repair. Just need some crow feathers. one stuck in this ramp. I hope they fix that before final release. Because, like, I'm pretty sure the first wolf spider I killed was also because it got stuck in a wall because it's so big. Okay. Got a button here. Gain entrance to the observation chamber. God, I can't actually see through it because of the helmet. Okay. How do we gain entrance? Is there a door in this room? Oh. Just need another bomb. Man, it would suck to come in here with only like two or three bombs and then be like, well, shit. Guess I have to stop in the middle of my exploration and go harvest some ant eggs. Intruder alert. Management squad prepared for deployment. Oh, this is probably how we fight the boss, then. Assistant manager keycard? Yeah, so we need to beat the boss in order to get the chip. Which is right near us. I think it's probably up there. Well, let's give him a shot. I don't know anything about this boss. Oh, also I'm going to prepare by using some smoothies. So we're going to use the beefy human food, which will give me a defense buff. He just got an achievement for that. And we're going to use this for regeneration. I have tried everything to turn off the actual sound for achievement pop-ups, but I can't. It seems you can hide everything except the actual sound. So there he is back there, shooting electric balls at me. I believe one of the other labs also had a advanced version of Taze-T that shot balls. Okay, so he shoots a bunch of projectiles. He has a lot of health. I mean, as long as this is his only thing in this first phase, this should be pretty easy. I like, too, that he seems to just have a regular battery strapped to his back to power that. He also seems very unimpressed by this whole thing. How much damage do these do? Hmm, actually, pretty decent damage. Okay, he does have a shockwave. Ooh, okay, that's more than I expected. Uh... Okay, these are the upgraded ones, the Arc Rs. Boy, this is uh, more than I expected it to be, honestly. <laughs> Our health is still doing great. That buff really seemed to have helped. Man, 
Those lasers, that's a cool effect when they turn on. There's a weight to them. I don't think I can duck under the other ones, though. So this is our time to, like, get in there and do some melee hits. Probably don't want to be in that shockwave, though. Okay. Confirmed you can duck under them. They look like they were a little too low. So I thought maybe you just have to follow the ground ones and jump over them. I think one just dropped on my head. I don't want to know how much- oh yeah, those do so much damage. I was about to say I don't want to know how much those do. I'm gonna heal. Okay, that one spawned literally where I was standing. <laughs> I gotta look at the way that they're aiming when he's doing the shockwave. Assistant Manager Chan, please. I actually thought this was gonna take us multiple attempts, even though I didn't expect him to have this sort of gimmick. So I'm really happy I switched to the crossbow with the extra arrows now. Uh-oh. What happens if he does it again? Oh, fuck. All right, well, I was about to heal. <laughs> but yeah, that's a, that's a tricky one. When he activates the electrical pillars while the lasers are still going. Because then you have to basically stand between the two electrical pillars and jump over the lasers while also not getting shot by him. But we almost had him in our first attempt. Unfortunately, I'm kind of regretting bringing this roly-poly armor because it's pretty expensive to repair and, of course, you need roly-poly parts and there are only like three or four of those that spawn at a time. So you have to do quite a runaround just to get the parts for it. And if you're wearing the armor while you're doing that, there's a good chance it's going to get damaged. But uh, hopefully we can beat him without losing our armor and then we can... Go kill an antlion and turn it into armor as well. Wait, the door's closed and everything? I wonder if that's because... You know, if you died and you were doing this multiplayer, your other friends would be able to keep going. This probably resets him. Okay, good. I was really hoping it didn't repair the glass. <laughs> that would have sucked. And thankfully, all my arrows are still here. Okay, looks like I haven't lost any arrows yet, because I started with 20. Well, this is why I brought this stuff, so let's uh, top up. I'm going to use a bandage as well, just to keep that regeneration going, and I'm going to eat mm. these so we don't get hungry. Can't waste food. Can't waste food. Oh, you know what? Can't waste food. I was mixing up my... I was mixing up my drinks. This is the one that boosts stamina. All right. You know, one of these uh, bombs would probably do some good damage to him. You can make them sticky as well so that you can throw them onto a target and then actually have them blow up. But I bet even without that, Unfortunately, I either have to huck this or throw it or drop it. 
And if you huck it, it goes really far, so I think it'll just bounce off his head. Yeah, that, he was out of range. Honestly, I should probably actually save the bolts for when he goes into laser mode, because that way we don't have to get close to hurt him. Lasers are coming. It would be nice if the lasers at least hurt the robots, because I don't see a reason why they wouldn't. My stamina is just permanently empty. As long as we avoid the traps, he actually doesn't do very much damage. Also, not really sure why the crossbow takes stamina to fire. Like, I understand if it took stamina to reload, but the actual firing is what takes the stamina. Also, real question of why they set this up. Now we have to avoid those two. Oh boy. I just got like comboed into the electricity. It'd be real nice if those would shut off now. Hmm. Well. There goes all my armor. I didn't expect him to do so much damage with those, though. It's also possible that by that point, my damage resist is running out, so I'm taking full damage. But that is a tough boss. Well, mini-boss, I suppose. He's not really listed as a boss, I don't think. He might be. But he is the boss or mini-boss of this dungeon, guarding its treasure. So maybe... Maybe it might be time to head to the desert. Because I feel like we've already gotten mostly just lab in this episode. But I had hoped this would be the shorter of the two, but it looks like it's going to be just as long. So yeah, for the sake of time, I think we're going to go to the desert now, and then maybe I'll just add in at the end me beating the boss, because that way uh, I can, you know, keep attempting it until he's almost dead. Because trying to do this again without armor is going to be impossible. And repairing this armor is going to take a while, so I'd kind of rather we just go to the desert and try to make a set of antlion armor. Of course... That means fighting the antlion with no armor at first. Which we might be able to do. Uh, the armor does not protect you from the desert at all, so it's not like not having armor is going to make us die faster from that. Again, I was just a little slow on using my granola bars. Because I basically, you know, I have to let go of WSAD in order to hit 8. I guess I can use my mouse hand for that. I don't normally use my right hand for hitting number keys. And I put on our Firefly helmet just so we have a little bit of armor. Because it's only slightly weaker than the roly-poly stuff. 
I think it's about the same strength as the ladybug armor. But again, I'm not convinced that the roly-poly armor, or at least the sickly version, is worth switching to from the ladybug, because it's only a tiny tick stronger on the defense scale, but the ladybug armor is much easier to repair. And I think that the, the antlion armor is actually pretty strong too, but it's not heavy armor, so your stamina regenerates faster with it. Alright. I'm hoping it is not nighttime right now. What time is it? Oh yeah, it's sunrise. So I also built a wall up here, because it turns out that the umbrella I built my stuff under does not provide any shade when the sun rises. <laughs> you get blasted directly. So I put a wall here to block the sun. But yeah, here's our little, our little outpost. We're going to use this workbench specifically to build the armor, which is why I built it here. So, uh, and we got to eat one of these once the sun comes up, which will keep us cool for a bit. There's our antlion. I don't think they're that tough. They're definitely not that quick. But... They can... Burrow, I was about to say. <laughs> oh, also I forgot to change our save point. Literally died next to the spawn point. So this didn't go the smoothest, but, you know, I think it was worth doing these videos, and we'll be able to go into the Broodmother, and then with the weapon we get from the Broodmother, I should be able to pretty smoothly go into the next update without needing a lot of preparation. Because like I said, it took me about 20 hours to get to the point before I started this video, or the previous video. So there's a solid amount of content in here already, and I've been watching someone else playing it with a friend their first time, and it's taken them quite a while to get anywhere, so yeah, I think this is a game that actually has some pretty decent playtime, despite being early access. And it seems like right now they're mostly just adding direct progression, so, you know, this update was harder than the content in the previous update, and the next update is harder than the content in this one, so you're meant to do them in order, instead of kind of widening the game, which I feel like is a good approach to start with for early access. First you go building towards the end, and then from there you can start adding in, like, alternative things to do, or, in the case of, like, roguelikes, alternate floors. So yeah, without armor, I think we're gonna get one-shotted. Also, we should switch to the sword and shield, because I think antlions are somewhat weak to slashing, or at least not resistant. Okay, sun is coming up. So when the sun is up, we get the sizzling meter, and if that fills up, we're gonna start dying very quickly. It is this area's environmental hazard. So, what are we gonna do? Well, I guess we'll eat this. And this. And this. Pretty much same you know, buffs as if we were fighting the boss, but uh, this thing should be considerably weaker. Also, we have to find one. So when they burrow, I'm not sure if we should run or if we should block. You hear that? That's the sound of a sleeping wolf spider sleeping under this, like, Duplo block. That's probably the one that killed me before. So, yeah, either we can dart from shade to shade, or we can eat one of these to- oh, wow, that doesn't actually help you very quickly. Yeah, we need the mutation? Fresh defense. Gas resist, burn resist, sizzle protection, but that would require me to give up one of my mutations. So either stamina regeneration or just overall stamina. I feel like overall stamina is less important than regeneration. So we'll deactivate that. We'll activate this. I don't know if this just makes the meter go up slower. But once we get the antlion armor, we won't have to worry about that. 
It's nice that it literally takes into account the shade as it changes throughout the day, so it's not like these are the programmed shade spots. It's anywhere you can see shade, you can stand in it and not sizzle. So, the desert, or sandbox, is, you know, pretty much just a big wasteland of bits and bobs, but there's also treasure to be found here. Nope. Apparently that's not good enough shade. Okay, assistant manager keycard. So this probably leads out of where you fight the boss as well. But yeah, we, uh, we can fight antlions, we can find buried treasure, and there is another chest in here that you need a key for. The key is hidden in one of the antlion burrows. Oh, we didn't set our spawn yet. Should do that before I die. So yeah, we have to kill the antlion living in the burrow, and then we can drop down into an underground hole. Alright, there we go. My water is also that not doing great really in this area. Okay, we need to get this antlion to follow me. Because there's no shade down there. Ooh, that one actually has a lot of health. Something I think that a lot of people don't know is that antlion as you know them, like this, are actually just larvae. They do become a flying insect, but the reason that most people don't know that is because the flying insect lives for about 30 days, and the larvae can actually survive for years in some cases without molting into their adult form. They basically only become adults in order to breed, and that's it. So they live most of their life like this, and I believe they actually don't eat as adults. Oop. So I think I can use that to get rid of the status effect once I set it off. I don't know if I can get this guy to come out. God damn it. There's no shade down there. And also, eating these doesn't seem to be helping. So yeah, the desert sucks, you might be able to tell. But it's one of those cases in this game where, in order to... You know, be able to actually survive here, you need to survive here without the right tools first. There's a lot of cases where, you know, in order to get some kind of protection, like for example, the gas mask for stink bugs, you actually need to fight them without having the protection first. And then it's like a reward for not dying. Oh, there's a little oasis here. We can just go for a nice, pleasant swim at the beach. I'm trying to find an ant line that's wandering because the wandering ones seem to have less health than the ones in their pits. I like that we've got cactuses and succulents growing over here, including this one, which is submerged, which would kill it. Succulents do not like being watered. I just fucking died from the cactus. <laughs> I wouldn't expect them to even hurt you because they're so big. The desert is a dangerous place. possible to turn that wolf spider against them. Can you come in here? Please don't burrow out of the water. I can't run in the water. Oh, you done fucked up, antlion. You burrowed somewhere that you can't move. Again, I'll allow it. Wow, they have such gross eyes. It just looks like a bunch of eyes instead of, ugh, instead of one jointed eye. Okay, we got one part, one pincer. So the pincers we need to make the sword. In fact, I think we need to scan them here. The 
Yeah, we need the jaws in order to make the sword, because they do have pretty impressive jaws. That's kind of their thing. The jaws that catch. And that needs pincers, parts, and silk rope. For some reason, this whole set seems to use silk rope. And silk rope is a, an easy resource to get, but a slow one to make, because you need to spin it on a loom. I think there might be treasure right here? Yeah. So if you see a sparkle, that's buried treasure. Okay, let's not walk into the cactus. And how much do we need to start making antlion parts? Uh, a lot, it turns out. I bet the ones that are wandering around drop less than the ones in the pits. You know what we could do? We could just throw fucking bombs down into one of those holes and see how they like that. Alright, shovel. I don't think we're gonna need the hammer, so I'm gonna keep the bomb on there. I'm, like, very afraid of these cactuses now. Okay. This is just more mint. But you do actually need the hammer in order to break. They seem actually pretty easy to block. As long as they don't one-shot you with their burrow attack. So I think the treasure is inside this castle. Thankfully, this biome is actually not too large, so it's not super hard to explore everything here quickly. We're not going to get everything. Oh, actually, the treasure appears to be behind here. And just like the one in the pond, it's a very large chest. We need a melted moat key. And that's going to be the one that's located in one of the antlion burrows. I think it's somewhere near the middle. not a bad way to beat the heat. Though I'm also out of water, I'm realizing. Seems like there's nothing in here, though. This is just a large area of safe water to jump into. I guess it is actually a moat. Uh, how do we get out of here? So, if I kill one more antlion, we should have enough parts to make at least the hat. Which will, I think, give us some sizzle defense. What the fuck is that sound? Sounds like tippy tappies. I mean, I like the idea of, like, darting from cover to cover like this. Really? I ran straight away from that and it still caught me. I'm not really sure how to reliably avoid that, or if I can block it. Like, if I just, do I just look down and block? But I can see how you'd also be able to manage this by building some shelters. But again, that seems like it would be a lot more work than just actually... Oh, fuck. That seems like it would be a lot more work than just actually killing the antlions. You know?
can't even find out what's in these buried treasures because I don't have my shovel. What? I was like teleported out of the ground. Thankfully, most enemies are polite enough to announce their attacks. But yeah, that one, I don't know what to do. I was like, you know, trying to block it. Whether you succeed seems very up in the air. Well, this is a bad predicament. So, I don't know if there's really much else to show here, because, I mean, there is the key, but that would just mean going around killing all these antlions in their burrows until we find it, and that wouldn't be very exciting. So I think you've gotten an idea of what there is to see in the desert right now. It actually looks like the plants have fallen off a ledge and started growing in the sand. I love how this is somehow enough to protect you. Even though it's actually the sand that would be hot, and not specifically the sun, because it's radiating the heat back up. If I remember correctly, sand is very good at absorbing heat, but not at holding it. Which is why the desert gets so cold at night, because it doesn't retain any of that heat. See, as long as I can keep him from burrowing, this is very manageable. And I managed to block it that time. It still kills you in one hit, though. Yeah, now my sword's broken, so I can't even fight them. I could use a club, but... I'd have to go get that back. So I think that'll do it for this What's Update. I don't want to show everything, but just, you know, now you know what, uh... What boss is in wait within the Black Ant Lab, and what to expect from the desert up here when you have no protection armor. I actually thought this would go better, because I thought that those mint shards would actually give you, like, a minute or two of protection from the heat. They don't seem to really protect you at all, so they're not super useful. I'm also curious how exactly I upgrade that mutation, because it seems like maybe I just have to eat a bunch of those in order to level it up. Because, you know, every one of them has three levels. So, thank you for joining me for some more Grounded. I hope you've enjoyed these misadventures, and sort of adventures as well, but mostly misadventures. The hell was that? See that giant shadow? Something just went past the sun. That was a bee. So, hopefully we'll be having some more looks into Grounded soon with both the boss bites and the upcoming update. But until then, you small folk all take care.